Hey everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So Zelda Tears of the Kingdom has finally been released and it's actually playable on the Apple Silicon Mac, all thanks to the Switch emulator Ryu Jinx. So spoiler warning, first of all, I'm gonna be showing some footage from the first 45 minutes of the game. So if you don't wanna be spoiled, then make sure not to watch this video until you've experienced the game first. Secondly, I just wanna make you aware that we do not support piracy on this channel. If you wanna play this game legally on a Mac, then you're gonna need something like this a hacked Nintendo Switch and we'll be using a Switch like this in order to decrypt the retail version of the game so make sure you own the game first of all and that you have access to a jailbroken Switch and I'm not going to be linking to any of the files that you might need in order to emulate Nintendo Switch games on the Mac the best thing to do is to source these from your own jailbroken Switch so Ryujinx hasn't had an official release on Mac since the 1.1.0 release back in November 2022 in a recent video I also showed you how to build a recent version of Ryujinx, incorporating more of the more recent fixes. However, this is not necessary anymore. In the latest progress report from the Ryujinx team, it's now possible to download the CI or continuous integration versions from every merge that is integrated into the master build. Just be aware that this is not a fully tested release of Ryujinx. This is basically a nightly build. Many of the macOS specific fixes have not been upstreamed yet. So you're gonna have to expect this build to be a little bit buggy. However, the idea is that in the future, Many of the macOS fixes will be upstreamed correctly into the build. So this video today is basically going to take you from start to finish. We're going to download the latest CI build of Ryujinx. We're going to set up and install all the files that you need to get started. We're going to pair a controller and we're going to tweak some of the graphics settings. And we're going to get Zelda Tears of the Kingdom working as well as possible on an Apple Silicon Mac. And if you're following my video tutorial today, you might be tempted to go online and do a little bit of research on game emulation resources that you can download from the internet. However, you shouldn't do this and unless you are protected. So that's why I highly recommend private internet access as VPN service. So if you didn't already know, a VPN is a virtual private network. A VPN hides your IP address and safeguards your internet connection through an encrypted tunnel. Private internet access can shield all the information about what you've been browsing on the internet from internet service providers, network administrators, and government sensors. Using the internet without private internet access is like using your phone without a protective case. All it takes is one unlucky drop and you'll be cracking something really valuable. And furthermore, private internet access allows you to access region-restricted content from all over the world. For example, streaming services like Disney+, Plus, Amazon Prime, and Netflix have different library options based on where you are located, and some shows cannot be accessed if you are not located in that region. However, private internet access allows you to overcome these restrictions by giving you the option to change your IP address from one of 82 different countries and all 50 US states. Private internet access is available on all platforms, including macOS, iOS, Windows, Android, and Linux as well. And with just one private internet access subscription, you can protect an unlimited number of devices. So make sure to click on the link in the description for my exclusive discount with private internet access and stay protected when you're downloading things from the internet. So the first thing that we need to do is to go to this GitHub page here, which I'll leave a link to in the description. This is the Ryujinx release channel master where all of the latest versions of Ryujinx are published. So at the time of recording, the last update was published published nine hours ago. And this follows the latest changes to the source code called the Continuous Integration or CI. So at the moment, a lot of the performance and GPU workarounds for macOS are not yet upstreamed. However, it's very likely that in the future, games like Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom and others are gonna be improved by the very latest version of Ryujinx. Just be aware that if you're downloading a CI build, then these aren't gonna be the full release and aren't necessarily gonna be tested. You might benefit by scrolling down and downloading an older version of the build or going to to the main Ryujinx website, clicking the download button here and downloading the latest full release, which will have been adequately tested with plenty of games. So now we're here, we're gonna download the latest release, make sure to expand the assets tab here, and we want to download the macOS Universal app here. So just click on download here. So make sure to go to Finder and then go to your downloads folder, and we're gonna find the compressed file here, which we're gonna double click on. It's gonna extract, and now we have Ryujinx here. And what you wanna do here is to drag and drop this into your applications folder. So I'm just gonna do that now. And then within the applications folder, we're gonna scroll down until we get to the Ryujinx file, and then go ahead and double click on this. So it's gonna say here that Ryujinx can't be opened because Apple cannot check it for malicious software. What we do now is to hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click on Ryujinx, and then click on the open button on this dialog. Now we have the option to manually open this file. And now you can see here we have Ryujinx 1.0 
1.792, which is the latest continuous integration release. So now what we need to do is to go ahead and set up the firmware and prod keys. So now I'd like to show you how to download these firmware and keys files. Ideally, you should be dumping this from your own hacked Nintendo Switch. So we need these two folders here. If we look in the firmware folder, it contains a whole bunch of NCA files. In the keys folder that we need are the title.keys and the prod.keys. So make sure to have these ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is to put the title.keys and prod.keys files in the correct place. So I'm going to go ahead and select these two files, go to edit and then press copy. And then I'm going to press the go button within Finder. Then I'm going to hold down the option key to reveal the library folder here. Click on this. And then we're going to find application support. So I'm going to double click on application support. And then basically we're going to scroll down until we find Reudinx. So here we're going to double click and then we're going to double click on the system folder. So just be aware that this file path location is different from the 1.1.0 macOS release. So now that we've selected this folder, we're going to click edit and then paste the two items. And then that's going to put the prod.keys and title.keys in the correct location. I'm going to minimize this. The next step now is to go to tools and then click install firmware and then select here, install a firmware from a directory. Then we're going to go to our downloads folder and find the extracted firmware 16.0.2, select this folder and then press open. And then we're going to press yes here to install the firmware. Now it says here the firmware has been installed, press OK. What we're going to do is add our game library. So here we're going to click options and then settings. And then within game directories, we're going to add the folder which contains our Switch game files. Now I'm not able to show you how to download Zelda Tears of the Kingdom or any other Switch games, but I'm going to show you how to add the game directory now. So I'm just going to go ahead and click the add button and then I'm going to navigate to the folder that I created with the games that I want to add and then press open. And now I've added that game folder. So now you can see here, Tears of the Kingdom has been added to our game library. So this is version 1.0.0. So ideally you want to make sure to get to the update file as well. So we're going to right click on the file itself and then we're going to click manage title updates to apply the update. So here we're going to press the add button and then we're going to make sure to add the 1.1.0 update. So this is the latest update at the time of recording. There might be a new one by the time you watch this. Just make sure to add the latest update and press open. And here we're going to select version 1.1.0 and then press save. So now this has been updated. So next thing that we wanna do is to download the 30 FPS and 60 FPS patches. So you might wanna use the 30 FPS patch if your game gets stuck at 20 FPS. And of course we wanna unlock the 60 FPS patch in case our hardware is able to reach this frame limit. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for this website. What we're gonna do is to scroll down and then we're gonna download the 60 FPS patch and also the 30 FPS patch. Let's click on the link and then download the Mediafire archive for both of those files. And then what we're gonna do is to go to Finder, go to our downloads folder, and then we're gonna extract both of these files. And then within the folder, what we're gonna do is to select whichever patch that you want to use. So you can't add both of these simultaneously. You need to choose which one you want to apply. I'm gonna be applying the 60 FPS patch. I'm gonna right click on the folder and then press copy. And then I'm gonna minimize this. We're gonna go back to the entry for Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, right click on this entry here, and then click open mods directory. Once we're in this folder, what we're going to do is to control click on the blank space and then press paste item. That's going to put our 60 FPS mod there. And now we can minimize this. And now our game is fully set up. So now what we're going to do is to pair a controller, which I highly recommend that you do. Here we're going to be using a Sony PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. You can also use an Xbox One or an Xbox Series controller as well, or the official Nintendo Joy-Cons too. So firstly, what we're going to do is to put this into pairing mode by holding down the option and the home button. And then this is going to start flashing blue here. So once that's flashing, we're gonna to go to the system menu here by going to system settings, and then we'll click on Bluetooth. And then we can see that in nearby devices, we have our DualSense control in pairing mode. Just go ahead and press the connect button on the right hand side. And once that's connected, it's gonna be a solid blue light. So within Reudinx, we're gonna to go to options here and then go to settings. And then within player one, what we're gonna do is to select the input device. And then we can see that the PlayStation 5 controller is ready to be allocated. So once that's done, you can also set the controller type. We're gonna emulate the pro controller here and then press OK. So once all of this is set up, we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to tweak any of the hypervisor settings as we did with Breath of the Wild. This is going to be launchable and playable. So all you have to do is double click and it's going to go ahead and launch the game. So my first impressions of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom on Mac is that it actually runs really well through Reuting. However, using the 60 FPS patch as I enabled it before results in some inconsistent performance as well as visual glitches. For example, this flickering on screen. 
Also, some cutscene audio wasn't working correctly at 60 FPS, and I think that there's more work to be done until 60 FPS works correctly on regions. So, one thing I did was go ahead and replace the 60 FPS patch with a 30 FPS patch instead, and this resulted in a gameplay experience with far fewer visual glitches and a more consistent performance and frame rate. Also, be aware that there's a substantial amount of shader compilation stutter. That means that when certain effects and animations are done for the first time, the game will stutter until those shaders or animations are cached and then the next time you perform that same action then it's going to run smoothly instead of stutter. So overall I'm really impressed how a triple A title like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom works really well on Apple Silicon Max through emulation. Now I'm aware that I'm running this on my M1 Max chip with 32 gigabytes of RAM and 32 GPU cores so it's not going to be indicative of every single Apple Silicon Mac but this first version of Ryujinx seems to work pretty well and I'm sure that once more of the fixes are integrated it's going to perform even better. Now the experience is far from perfect with plenty of visual glitches and performance issues as well as inconsistent lighting and shadows. However I'm sure that the community is going to be working and fixing these issues in the very near future. If anything the emulation community is very tenacious and I'm very sure that if you're watching this a few months into the future then most of these problems are probably going to get solved. So Zelda Tears of the Kingdom emulation isn't quite perfect yet so there's a lot of work left to be done but I'm hoping that the community is going to pick this up and within a few months we're going to have a much more playable game with fewer visual glitches and much better performance. If you want to keep up to date with Mac Gaming News then make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.